years ago they were talking that the sitcom is dead, but that doesn't sound like what you're finding out from your study. It's funny. Uh, a lot of uh, if if I had a if I had a dime for every time somebody said a genre was dead, I'd be a very rich woman. Um, we maintain that genres and formats themselves cannot be dead. But what is dead is when nobody tries to innovate on them. So it's interesting um, because there have been recently um, some very high profile people in Hollywood who have announced they want to reinvent the three camera sitcom, which is great because no one has really tried to do that. Uh, same thing with competition reality. We see people saying competition reality is dead. We argue it's dead because the producers killed it and the networks killed it by just just kind of recycling the same ideas and the same production values and the same conceits. We found that um, when people try to take existing formats or existing genres and maintain some pieces of it but really reinvent others, whether it's radical changes in lighting or staging or not just taking the same formula and putting in a new cast but really radically changing the POV of one major element, it tends to be seen as very fresh. So we encourage that kind of experimentation. In fact, in the reality and unscripted space there's not enough experimentation and that's one of the reasons that that, that, that genre has, has really stagnated. And, and to that point, one of the things that we find that's really interesting to the blank is dead conversation is that when uh, in the early days of reality's uh, renaissance as a, as a modern format in the early 2000s, everyone said scripted was dead. So during the blossoming of reality and the scripted, what happened was there was no attention paid to what was going on in dramatic television and networks and pro production companies were able to take more risks. Creators were involved that hadn't been involved before. They were able to experiment under the radar. So what happened as everyone started chasing the ratings for reality and that started to stagnate, guess what happens? All of a sudden, scripted is alive and everyone says reality is dead. So these things are cyclical only in as much they don't have a natural shelf life. It's really about what the, what the production community and what the media community choose to designate uh, worthy of their efforts. And when they do too much of the same thing, it dies. You had mentioned uh, dramas that might be too dark. Mm -hmm. Considering the range of successful dramas on nowadays, how dark is too dark? That's, we're going to be investigating how dark is too dark because it seems that the viewer has no ending appetite for uh, dark and complicated dramas. We see this as a direct correlation to their experience in the aftermath of the economic collapse. And we're actually exploring something we call PTSD culture right now, which is really an evolution of um, trying to deal with the aftermath of a really horrible thing happening in your life and trying to pick up the pieces and move forward. Sort of a big question, but can you give, uh, based on all your work, a profile of American culture today? American culture today is in a really interesting place. We're about six years, seven years out of the economic collapse, the f really, which was a very profound an impactful uh, event for everyone in this country. Um, probably millennials have felt it the strongest. Um, we call it a post-collapse culture where there is a recognition that something bad has happened, something tragic that has collectively affected us all. And that forces people in their day-to-day -day lives to see the world differently than they did before the collapse. So when you, when you are struggling economically, to have a job, to keep a job, to pay your bills. You see, or know people who are, you see the world differently. So you process other things that are equally difficult in the world. Everything from a natural disaster, like an earthquake or a fire or a tornado, to a man-made disaster, like Bernie Madoff or Lance Armstrong or General Petraeus, to social disasters, like Ferguson or shootings, school shootings to ISIS. All these things become connected in an ecosystem because people are fundamentally struggling themselves. So all these things happened, those, all these things have happened throughout time, but in, a, in when times were better before the collapse and everybody was really focused on making the most money possible, having the best plastic surgery, having the biggest house for the most money and the uh, most productive stock portfolios, we kind of forgot 
that uh, there was sort of a human cost to all this. And so what the economic collapse did was essentially democratize. It literally collapsed all the hierarchies. And now we have a culture that doesn't trust institutions. And an institution can be everything from a media company to the music industry, to Wall Street, to banking. It can be anything that uh, was an established way of thinking and doing things. And so you see a culture that's really fueled by a millennial spirit, which is we need to make better systems. So instead of banking, you have Kickstarter, if you want to get a loan to start a business. Um, instead of Hertz, you've got Zipcar. Um, you see a much more practical way of living that is really fueled by this millennial sensibility. So. Uh, part of what this country is in right now is sort of a PTSD phase where we're trying to remedy the ills and you see a lot of attention being given to um, neurological and mental issues, much more so than um, before it was always physical ailments that you could correct with surgery or plastic surgery. Now it's really a lot of it is the, um, the uh, emotional cost of all of this collapse.